Welcome back. We all know that at the core of a Six Sigma improvement is the data. But we should also know the ways in which we ascertain that the data that we have collected is accurate and precise, and our measurement system is repeatable and reproducible. In this lesson we are going to understand some basic concepts used in measurement system analysis. In any process there is inherent variation. This means that if Bob the carpenter is making frames of the comfy chair, the dimensions would vary to a certain extent for each of the chair. For example, if the height of first chair is 150.5 cm, second chair's height may be 151.5 cm. This means that the process output is varying each time due to the inherent and natural variation. There is another element called as measurement error which may add to the variation in process outputs. Measurement error is defined as the effect of all sources of measurement variability that cause an observed value or the measured value to deviate from the true value. This measurement error can be introduced by a part, operator or gauge. We need to quantify this measurement error so as to get better and more accurate conclusions. To quantify the measurement error we make use of MSA. Measurement system analysis or MSA is a mathematical procedure to quantify variation introduced to a process or product by the act of measuring. Let us see a typical measurement process now. We take the item to be measured as input, it goes to the operator, which may be a person or an instrument, with the help of a measuring equipment, reference and procedures. The item is measured, and output of this measurement process comes in the form of measured value in the item itself. When we collect measurements of all the items in a batch, the measured values have some inherent variation. There will be the measurement variation as well which is induced by the measurement system, due to operators and equipment used. In measurement system analysis, the whole environment should be evaluated and not just the measuring equipment. Since we should ensure in measure phase that the collected data is accurate and precise, we should perform MSA. It gives us the confidence that we can rely on the collected data. The study can answer questions like below, how much variability in the measurement system is caused by differences between operators? How much variation is caused by measuring device? What is the gauge repeatability and reproducibility? What is the combined estimate? What percent of total variation is due to measurement? What percent of tolerance has variation due to measurements? Whether the measurement system is capable of discriminating between different parts or not. We want to have our observations as close to true value as possible. MS thus enables us to take appropriate and timely actions in case the measurement system is having a large contribution in the process variation. No matter how well the people are trained, it's likely for them to vary in collecting data, while the tools and devices are known to degrade over time. Thus, we need to take this variation into account. Part of measurement plan should include ways to maintain data sanity. Let us see the various characteristics of measurement system which should be given the attention when the measurements are being repeated over time. For assessing the accuracy, the three characteristics, stability, bias and linearity should be studied. To assess the precision, repeatability and reproducibility should be studied. In this lesson we'll discuss at a glance what are the terms stability, bias and linearity. Stability of a measurement system is its capacity to give same output over time when measuring the same sample. This is sometimes called drift. When a measurement system is stable, there are no special cause of variation, only the common cause of variation is present. To maintain stability of the measurement system, measuring devices should be kept calibrated time to time. In this figure we can see the drift in the measurement system over a period of time. Environmental conditions such as cleanliness, noise, vibration, lighting, chemical, wear and tear or other factors usually influence gauge instability. Gauge stability studies should be the first exercise after calibration procedures. Control charts are commonly used to track the stability of a measurement system over time. Bias indicates how close the measurements are to reference values. To determine if a device is biased, subtract the individual measurement value from the reference value. If the values are consistently on one side, 
the device may be positively or negatively biased. In positive bias, the device overestimates while in negative bias, the device underestimates. Let us see this with the help of an example. A manufacturer wants to know whether a weighing scale is consistently and accurately measuring the weight of a 100 gram part. Readings taken are given here. If we subtract reference value of 100 from these individual measurements, we can say that the scale is positively biased as the differences are on a positive side of the scale. The difference in bias values throughout the measurement range, in which the gauge is intended to be used, is called as linearity. This tells us how accurate the measurements are through the expected range of the measurements. It answers the question, does the gauge have the same accuracy for all sizes of objects being measured? Many times linearity indicates a need to replace or perform maintenance on measurement equipment. Let us understand it with the help of an example. We want to check if there is any linearity present in the weighing scale. We take reading at different reference values, like 100, 200, 300 grams. In this graph, we can see a slope. This is showing that at higher range the weighing scale is giving higher readings. There is no consistency in the measurements across the measurement range. If the gauge measures low at small reference values and high at large reference values, and also if P is less than 0.05, there may be a statistically significant slope. This indicates large linearity. So far we have covered the characteristics of measurement system with respect to location, or the accuracy. In the next lesson, we will see the characteristics from the precision point of view. Let us also learn how we can perform gauge linearity and bias study in Sigma Excel. This study helps in determining whether our gauge is measuring accurately or not. For the study, we have to go to Sigma Excel, Measurement System Analysis, Basic MS Templates and select Gauge Bias and Linearity Study. This template appears for data inputs. As we know, bias indicates how close our measurements are to the reference values. A positive bias indicates that the gauge overestimates. A negative bias indicates that the gauge underestimates. The percent bias value indicates how much gauge bias explains the overall process variation. If the gauge measures low at small reference values and high at large reference values, there may be a statistically significant slope. The p-value for slope shows the significance, which indicates large linearity. In this situation, the bias values are positive at one extreme and negative at the other, making the overall bias impractical to interpret. We can also say that bias is not significantly present as p-value is not less than 0.05 for the reference sizes 4 and 6. Clicking on the Generate Linearity tab, Sigma Excel gives a linearity chart and percent process variation chart. Linearity study shows how consistently the gauge measures across the reference values. When the slope is small, the gauge linearity is good. Here we can see that there is a significant slope. This, we had found during the bias study as well. This study reveals that the linearity is having around 14% of contribution in process variation. Even the bias is not significant, we see that the inconsistency of the bias across the sizes indicates that the measurement system has linearity problems. P is coming out to be zero in slope. Thus there is a significant slope present. Sigma Excel provides the sample data and example data for all the functions. You may have a look there in the help section of Sigma Excel. These are the formula used in the calculations. Bias is calculated by taking the average of all values coming as a difference between measured value and reference value. Percentage bias is calculated as mod of bias divided by process variation multiplied by 100. Linearity is calculated by multiplying slope with process variation. And percentage linearity can be calculated by multiplying 100 to mod of slope. Let us do some exercises. In the workbook you'll find the data on sheet 2.3.2, perform gauge linearity and bias study, analyze the output and write your observations.
we learned the accuracy part of measurement system analysis and understood how can we analyze bias, linearity and stability in the measurement system. Next lesson is on the precision studies and we'll discuss about gauge repeatability and reproducibility. Here we come to an end to this lesson. Should you need any support, feel free to contact us. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next lesson.